Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar we'll then run through the UK Met Office run have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days and then we'll have a look at the various mid to long range models looking at the GFS, GM, Eastern WF and the ensembles it does look like we're going to continue to see quite mixed conditions over the next couple of weeks as we head into August we're going to see plenty of precipitation in the north and the west, not in the south and the east, where we are very dry at the moment, potentially reaching drought conditions within the next few weeks. We don't see that rainfall uh, arrive. There could be some thundery showers around as well in the south, as we alluded to yesterday. But we are still seeing a signal, though, for high pressure to be in control, at least for the south. Most likely, though, also pushing northwards as well at times. So we could be seeing... Uh, as I said, a wide range of conditions, as we'll see with the models and the ensemble members. We could even be seeing heat wave conditions return as well. We are seeing a bit of a consistency now in the longer range. So around day 10 of high pressure to sit over the top of the UK, and we would then start to develop some real homegrown heat. But there is a lot of happening before we could reach that period. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link is in the description. So if you do look at the live radar, you can see there is a bit of precipitation around at the moment. A few showers across central and southern areas. We even saw some heavier showers last night as well across Yorkshire and across Kent. But they were isolated, slow moving, so giving quite a bit of precipitation in very small areas. Not the widespread rainfall we do kind of need. You can see precipitation pushing into the west, and we're going to see weather fronts approaching. But the predominant area of precipitation is going to be across Northern Ireland, northern parts of the Republic of Ireland, parts of North Wales, Northern England, and Scotland. The areas that are really, really dry at the moment in the south and the east are not going to be seeing too much of this precipitation. Even though when we have a look at the pressure charts, it look like there's a lot of precipitation moving through. Most of that rain is going to be further northwards. We are likely still to see some precipitation in the south. We could still see some heavy thundery showers, as we said yesterday. But we're not seeing any sort of frontal rainfall, which would give widespread 5 to 10 millimetres that we need. A few isolated areas could see that sort of amount, could see more with some thunderstorms. But other areas could see very much close to zero millimetres of rain over the next week or two. Uh, but what we really need, as I said, is a widespread soaking. And it doesn't look like we've got that coming in the near future. Now, I've got this around early afternoon, around 2pm. So if we do have a look at those temperatures, you can see it is a reasonably warm day. Temperatures in and around average, maybe slightly above average in a few areas, slightly below average, but mostly average sort of temperatures you can see oranges quite widely those temperatures getting into the low 20s maybe 22 to 24 degrees for the high but widely around that 20 degree mark further north and westwards of course with more of a westerly influence it's going to be slightly cooler with the air coming on off the atlantic back down to mid to high teens again close to average for this time of year so if we do now have a look at the ukv have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days Days. If we do go out to this afternoon, you can see there were a bit more widespread showers forecasted from the UKV, especially later this morning. We haven't really seen them broke out across central uh, southern areas. So interesting seeing the UKV overhyping those a little bit. But those showers will fade away um, regardless of how widespread they do actually eventually get this afternoon. They will fade away. And tonight we could see some heavier showers break out across northern England, from Yorkshire, northwest England towards Liverpool. Up towards Yorkshire and southern parts of Scotland could see some very heavy rain breaking out there. But it should slowly clear northwards and dissipate by around 8, 9 a.m. So falling overnight um, to areas that do need rain, but not the areas that are uh, that are close to drought conditions. So preferably we see these showers breaking out in the south, but at the moment it doesn't look like they're forecasted further northwards. As we head through Thursday afternoon, you can see there is a few showers here or there in the west, but nothing too crazy. Again, heavier showers across northern England, southern Scotland and northern Ireland. Maybe a few little thundery showers there, but most of them just moderate to heavy intensity. Now, if you move through Thursday night into Friday, a few showers around. And by Friday afternoon, we see weather fronts approaching. But, as I said, the majority of that precipitation 
is in the north. So it gives quite a soaking to northern England, parts of North Ireland, Scotland, and that precipitation might edge into East Anglia, the London area, with a few lighter patches of rain, but nothing substantial at all for Saturday afternoon. For more precipitation heads through, but again, through the Midlands, northern England, Scotland and Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland are going to be some, seeing most of this rain. Areas further south and eastwards not seeing a lot at all. For Sunday, we could see quite a widespread thundery outbreak in the south and the east. Again, this is what I mean by most um, of the conditions is going to be dry. Most of the time, these weather fronts are going to avoid the south and the east. But in this scenario, by Sunday afternoon, we are seeing the instability reach the south. With the sunshine, some warmer upper air conditions, as we'll see in a minute, we could be breaking out with some big, heavy thunderstorms. But being four or five days away, we can't overhype it too much yet. We'll have to see some consistency with this and wait until a couple of days out to have a look at the details for that. And they'll slowly fade away through Monday. Still seeing some precipitation drop further southwards, but nothing too major. But at least it is something on this latest UK V run. Now, the reason for those thunderstorms and the precipitation in general is because we have a weather front. It's got low pressure to our north, much cooler air masses, much warmer air masses to our south, around 14, 15 degrees at 850 HPA. And that's why when we do avoid the thundery showers, the cloud and any lingering precipitation coming in from the weather fronts, it will get very warm, maybe even hot in the south. We could even get to heat wave conditions, as I said, getting those temperatures into the high 20s, maybe touching on 30 degrees by the last couple of days of this month and start of August. So if you do now have a look at what the max temperatures are showing from this UK V run, you can see the afternoon temperatures about 22, 23 degrees for the high, but widely around that sort of 18, 19, 20, maybe 21 degree mark. As we head towards Thursday, we see those temperatures potentially rising once again into the low 20s, maybe 23, 24 in a few spots. Widely, though, I said 18 to 22 degrees. So as we head towards Friday afternoon, you can see those temperatures rising even a little bit higher, maybe 26, 27, or maybe even 28 degrees in some areas. So getting very warm, if not slightly hot in some regions. As I said, it's because we have looked at those upper air temperatures. They are rising to those low to mid-teens at AM Drifty HPA, which is a very warm upper air mass. And as we head towards Saturday, you see those temperatures again still very warm in the far south, 26, 27, maybe 28 degrees, slightly cooler further northwards with the weather fronts approaching. And by Sunday afternoon, we could very similarly see temperatures rise to around 28, 29, maybe even 30 degrees across Essex area, East Anglia, Kent, into the London area. could be very hot getting towards those heat wave levels just simply because we have those very warm upper air conditions and it could aid those thundery showers that could break out. So if we do see those thunderstorms and those showers not quite break out in the south, it'll be a very dry, very warm, if not hot, next sort of two or three days, the last couple of days of July and start of August could be very warm if not hot. Heat wave conditions could be reached if we do see somewhere get above 28 degrees every single day. We could just about reach heat wave levels. But if we do see those showers break out, which I do hope we do see them break out, just because we do need that precipitation, we could be seeing those temperatures slightly lower, a bit more heavy showers and thunderstorms around. So there is a little bit of a split uh, exactly what is going to happen and we'll be able to decipher it exactly once we get into sort of the two or three day time frame instead of the five day time frame at the moment. So if we do have a look at the GFS run, see what the pressure charts are showing. We've got high pressure over the top of us at the moment. That's why we do some uh, showery outbreaks because the high pressure isn't particularly high, but it is high pressure regardless. So that's why we're not seeing anything too major at this stage. But low pressure will run in off the Atlantic by the end of this working week, and it will give some precipitation, as we saw in the north, and maybe a few showers in the south towards the weekend. But the centre of the uh, centre of the low, sorry, is towards Iceland, so we are quite far away before high pressure does build back in, especially in the south. But the north still seeing low pressure coming in, and you see the tilt of those isobars mean the air direction is generally coming from the west to southwesterly direction, and it means in the south it could remain very warm if not hot, as I said, further north with precipitation with cooler air masses, and that will just fuel those weather fronts. But the weather fronts are positioned much further north. It's not where we need the precipitation right now. Beyond that, we could see low pressure continue to run in, and we could see briefly cooler air masses coming in from the north as the low clears out into the North Sea. But in the longer term, this is the trend we're seeing, a high pressure 
building back in towards the UK. At the moment, the tilt of those isobars are in from the east to northeast, so it's not a hugely hot air mass, not crazy, but still around 10 to 15 degrees at 850 HPA, which would get temperatures in around that high 20s, maybe into the low 30s. Cause so it could be very warm, very hot in the first 10 days of August in the south. Further northwards, though, it does look like there will be plenty of precipitation around. And you can see this well reflected, but if we do run back to around day 7 in the south, you're getting that 15 degree ice firm close by. In the north, weather fronts, cooler air masses moving in and it's just a sign of the times um, and that we're going to see some very warm maybe hot conditions for some but some very cool showery wet conditions further north as we could see quite a split over the next week or two and unfortunately we would very much prefer that precipitation to be widely uh, widespread and especially in the south but at the moment it doesn't look anything persistent will be coming there now, if we look at the GEM, see how that does compare. Again, we see high pressure building in at the moment. Low pressure then running in, but through the north, giving precipitation there. But we generally see more areas of precipitation move in through the first few days of August. This would be more of a showery outbreak with those centre of the lows further northwards. But with generally lower pressure for more widespread areas, it would give a more showery outlook, especially further southwards as well, for eventually high pressure does build in, but we have slightly cooler air masses with that air direction coming in from the north. So the GEM run definitely going a little bit more showery and a little bit cooler than the GFS run, especially in the south, bringing those lows and that cooler, more unstable air masses slightly further southwards. So we'll just have to see how this does play out, but that GEM run not showing anything persistent in the south, but very much we could accumulate some precipitation from some heavy showers with that, which I guess is better than nothing. So if you look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure in control at the moment. Low pressure running in off the Atlantic. We see repeated bouts of low pressure. And we could see quite a vigorous low there in around a week's time. But again, the low is centred much further northwards. So again, we could see some precipitation in the south, but it's uncertain how significant will be as it most likely again will be of showery nature for eventually that high pressure does build in around day 10 so very similar to the gfs run again you look at the upper air temperatures not massively warm yet but they would start to build and we would see a bit of homegrown heat there at day 10. so it does look like the runs are very similar with low pressure generally running into the north higher pressure generally sitting further southwards North is definitely going to see cooler conditions over the next week or two. Definitely going to see some heavier precipitation around as well. The south, very, very uncertain with the exact positioning of that low, deciding how warm, if not hot, it's going to get. But how much precipitation are we going to see? Is it going to stay bone dry? Are we going to see some heavy showers, some thunderstorms? Or whether we will actually see weather fronts arrive, giving a widespread soaking of, of rain? But again, we'll just have to see. It all depends on the positioning of the lows and, of course, the jet stream uh, positioning as well. How far southwards does it get? But if it doesn't come off in the next week or two, you can see by this signal around day 10, it does look likely high pressure will build back in for the middle uh, of the month. Around the 10th of August, it's looking highly likely we see higher pressure build back in, which could, unfortunately, put back another streak of very dry warm days again which won't be good if we haven't seen any precipitation from then uh, from now until then so if we do finish the video by just having a look at the ensembles you can see slightly cooler than average in london at the moment but that will rise to around if not above average all the way to around the 4th of august Slightly beyond, beyond that, we do start to pull in slightly chillier air masses, and that will be when that high pressure builds back, builds in over the top of us. We're starting to pull a bit of an easterly flow in, and that could reduce those temperatures slightly. But at the surface, because it would be dry, it would be sunny, it most likely wouldn't affect the surface temperatures too much. For in the longer term, we see that heat start to build under that higher pressure with above average temperatures, drier conditions quite widely, very few precipitation spikes there. You can see operational run is on the cooler end of the ensembles. Most are going towards 14 to 20 degrees at end of HPA, which would start to give heat wave like conditions. It is right in the longer term, so we have to take it with a pinch of salt, but it is there, and we'll just have to see how it does develop. 
Another important thing to have a look at is the sea level pressure. And you can see this when we do generally still have higher pressure all the way to around the 4th, 5th of August. Then lower pressure does build in, but it builds in, um, uh, low pressure doesn't move in, but it's not particularly low pressure. And again, it all depends on the exact positioning of the low. If we just generally see lower pressure, it'll mean a showery outbreak, so more likely but nothing too persistent unless we do see um, weather fronts move in. And again, if you have a look at the precipitation, you can see still loads of small precipitation spikes. So quite a few of the ensemble members do have some convective showers over the next week to 10 days. But as I said, it all depends on the positioning of the low. And they're not particularly bunched up too much at this stage. There's not a lot of consistency between the ensembles. And if we do have a look at the... Two meter temperatures, you can see it looks generally quite warm in the London area, in around that 25 degree mark most of the days for the next couple of weeks, apart from today and tomorrow, but it's widely going to be around that 25 degree mark for the foreseeable foreseeable future, which is above average. And again, if we do start to get those warmer air masses building in at times, we could see those temperatures even rise into the high 20s, maybe even getting towards 30 degrees, which would start to reach heatwave thresholds, as I said. If you look at the ECMWF ensembles, if we, you can see cooler than average at the moment, turning much above average by the start of August. Very warm before a little bit of a dip around the 5th, 6th of August before returning above average. Precipitation is slightly higher on the ECMWF ensemble, so it does look like we will see some convective showers from this. But we have got 50 ensemble members here, so even though there is a lot more precipitation spikes here, in terms of the amount of ensembles we would be, we're seeing here, it's pretty much expected to see more precipitation spikes. Um, so yeah, very similar to the GFS. And if we just check out, for example, Glasgow, if we go further northwards, you'll be able to see there is a lot more precipitation coming up. So yes, it's been dry in the north recently as well, but we're likely to see a lot of precipitation coming, a lot more consistency and some big consistent precipitation spikes coming up. So very likely to see some heavy rain in the north, which I think a lot of people would appreciate. But we would hopefully see some of this spread southwards as well. We want a share of that rainfall. At this stage, we're not seeing anything like that. We're seeing a very mixed bag. Could be heavy showers and thunderstorms around, but at the same time, we could stay very dry and go very warm, if not hot, in the south. So we'll have to just see how it does develop. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully we do see some widespread precipitation. Does it likely there will be some showers in the south, but their nature, their intensities and their widespread um, activity is yet to be determined. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it. But at the moment, does it like there will be plenty of warm, hot weather around in the south. There'll be plenty of cooler, more unsettled weather in the north. And there is the potential in the longer term for that high pressure to build back in. That's a good signal we are seeing today over um, towards day 10, which could give us more widespread, drier and warmer conditions. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.